Okay, this, this video is, let me clear this, okay, this video is how to uh, find the pH uh, or the molarity later on in this video when you're dealing with a strong acid or base. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know about strong acids and strong bases, so I'd write this down somewhere on your paper here. Okay, so when you have a strong acid or a strong base, okay, that equals 100% ionization. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate that with an ice table. So if you have HCl and you know you're making a solution out of it, okay, it's going to break into hydrogen and chloride ions, okay. Now, if you start with a 0 0.050 molar of it initially, all right, and let me draw this, you would have zero H plus and zero chloride at the beginning. Okay, but this is gonna go down 100%. Okay, so at equilibrium, we are going to have zero. So this is gonna go down by X, this is gonna go up by X, and this is gonna go up by X, but X is gonna be 100% of what you start with. So basically, the molarity of your acid is going to be the molarity of your H pluses at equilibrium. Okay, we really don't care about the chloride in this case, but I can put it in there, because you're gonna have 100% ionization. Okay, now that, that makes it easy when trying to find the pH because pH equals a negative log of the H, the hydrogen ion. So you would go pH equals a negative log of 0 0.050 molar, and there must be this one there. And so the pH then equals, if you do the pH of that, that equals 1.3. Okay, once again, with a strong acid, okay, you get 100% ionization. So basically, the molarity of the acid is the molarity of the H+. Now, if you remember that, you don't have to make an ice table. Okay? Now, sometimes people get a little confused when you have a strong acid like sulfuric acid, and it's going to break into, but here's the thing about acids, they they ionize into one hydrogen at a time. So anyway, basically it's gonna ionize into H plus and then this weak acid HSO4, negative one. All right, so the, the moral of the story with that is if this is 0 0.010, it's gonna go down by X, okay, initial change equilibrium but then you also get a 100% ionization. So this is going to be zero here, okay? Because 100% of it is gonna turn into these ions over here. This is gonna go up by X, this is gonna go up by X. We don't really care about this one, but if 100% of this changes, X is 0 0.010. So once again, the H plus with a strong acid equals the molarity of the initial acid. So you don't really need to make an ice table, but you could if you wanted to. But then you're gonna just go pH equals a negative log H plus. So pH equals a negative log of 0 0.010. And if you punch the buttons on that, you end up getting, if you round a little bit, a pH of 2.0. Okay, now bases also ionize 100%, but you have to be a little more careful with a base. So with bases, I would always make an ice table. I'll show you why. Okay, so barium hydroxide is going to ionize 100% into barium and hydroxide ions. All right, but when you balance that equation, there's going to be a 2 there. All right. So anyway, let's say that this is initially 0.35. All right. 
and initially you would have zero and zero of these. This is going to go down by x, but after this dissociates 100%, you're going to have zero left there. This is going to go up by x, and this is going to go up by, however, 2x, according to the balanced equation. All right? And so we know that x, because if this goes down to zero, x has to be 0.35. And so then this is 2 times 0.35, which then equals 0 0.70. Okay, so at equilibrium, your hydroxide is 0 0.70. All right, now you can't do a pH of a hydroxide. Instead, you have to do a pOH. So a pOH is equal to the negative log of the OH or the hydroxide ion. So the pOH is going to equal a negative log of 0 0.70. Oops. Okay, so then the pOH equals, if you do the negative log of 0 0.70, that equals 0.15. But since we want to get a pH, we've got to use the relationship that pH plus pOH equals 14. And so pH plus 0.15 equals 14. Take away 0.15 from 14. And so 14 minus 0.15 is 13.85. Okay, that's how that would work. Okay, now, that's trying to go, uh, trying to find the pH when you know the molarity. Now, I'm gonna show you how to go backwards if you know the pH, how you can find the molarity. All right, so here we have HNO3, which is nitric acid, which is one of the strong acids. Okay, so nitric acid makes H plus and NO3 negative. Now, you might not need to make an ice table if you know what's going on here, but I'm just going to do it to help me explain a little bit. Okay, so what's the molarity of this? So we don't know what this is. That's what we're looking for. But it's going to go down by x, and we know there's going to be zero of it at equilibrium. There's zero of this. These. This is going to go up by x. This is going to go up by x. We don't really care about the nitrate. Okay. But what we want to know is we want to know what the H plus, if we can figure out what the H plus is, then we know what X is, and then we know what the HNO3 is. So here's, here's how you can find that. Uh, uh, you can use this relationship that the H plus is going to equal the anti-log. Okay, now I, that's what I call it. I don't know if that's the exact correct thing, but that's how I push the buttons on my calculator of the negative pH. Okay, the anti-log, if you're looking on your calculator, it is the, the 10 to the, I'm kind of running out of room to write, but the anti-log is the 10 to the X button is what it is. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna just define the H plus. I'm gonna go anti-log, uh, let's see, what's the molarity? A negative 1.2 because uh, that's, that's the pH. And if I do that, I get that H plus is equal to 0 0.063. That's what my H plus is. So now I know my H plus is 0 0.063. And basically, that's what X is. And so this goes down by X. So we know then that the HNO3 is going to be the same as the H plus in terms of molarity, so it's 0 0.063 molar. Okay, so that would be your answer right there. All right, uh, here's one here, a base. So NaOH, what's the molarity of it? Okay, I'll, I'll do the ice table just to demonstrate. Now, once you get a little bit better at this, you get to go a little faster. You might not want to make an ice table, but I'm just going to make one to show you something. Initial change equilibrium. Okay, so it says, what is the molarity? So we're looking for this right here, initial. What's the molarity of it? We know that it's going to go down by 
x, and we know because it's a strong base, there's going to be 0 left of it. This is going to be 0, this is going to be 0, this is going to go up by x, this is going to go up by x. So at equilibrium, we have x and x. Okay, now, if we can figure out what x is from the pH, then we know what NaOH is. That's how this works. So we have the pH. Well, that doesn't work. pH doesn't work for OHs. So what you got to do is you got to find the pOH using this relationship, pH plus pOH equals 14. So if we put in 12.3 plus pOH, that equals 14. So the pOH, uh, let's see, if I do 14 subtract 12.3, I get the pOH is 1.7. Okay, so now, now that I know the pOH, I can do this right here. I can find the OH, and so there is this relationship that the hydroxide concentration will be equal to the anti-log, or the 10 to the X button, if you prefer that, of the negative pOH. So the hydroxide ion concentration will be the anti-log negative 1.7, and so I get that the OH is, if I do that function on my calculator, I get 0 0.020 molar. Now, if I know that the hydroxide is 0 0.020, that's what, oops, I don't want that. Sorry about that. I don't want all that scribbling there. I don't know why that's doing that. But it is, so erase that. Okay, there we go. All right, so... If my hydroxide is 0 0.020, that's what X is. And then I know that this goes down by X, so this is what the NaOH must be. So the NaOH must also be 0 0.020 molar. Okay? Let's do another one, or maybe you want to pause the video and try this one with H2SO4. Okay, so H2SO4, one thing to remember, and some people forget this, is with your acids, only one hydrogen ion dissociates at a time. So you want to just break one hydrogen off. Okay, and what's nice about that is it says, what is the molarity? So we're looking for that, initial change equilibrium. What's nice about that is when it goes down, this is going to go down by x. There's going to be 0 left, but this is only going to go up by x, and this is going to go up by x, and so this will be x. So basically, if we can figure out what x is, then that's going to be the molarity of our H2SO4. Now, we can figure out x by figuring out the hydrogen ion concentration because the hydrogen ion concentration can be determined by doing the anti-log of the negative uh, pH. So if I take H plus, it's going to go anti-log a negative, uh, let's see, 1.8. So H plus then equals 0 0.016. Now, that, what that shows then is that your H plus is 0 0.016, and that's what X is equal to. So then your, that just goes to show that the H2SO4 must also be equal to the hydrogen ion concentration of 0 0.016 molar. Okay, so that's the answer there. Now, the tricky ones are these base ones, like barium hydroxide. And I'll show you why they're kind of tricky. So... With these, I always like to make an ice table so I don't forget to do what I need to do. So that's going to make barium plus two hydroxides. And so it says, what is the molarity? So we're looking for that. Initially, we don't, we don't know what that is. Change equilibrium is supposed to be a C. Okay. So this is going to go down by x, and because it's strong, there's going to be zero of it at equilibrium. This is zero. This is zero. 
Okay, this is going to go up by x, but we don't really care about the barium so much. This is going to, however, go up by 2x. That's supposed to be plus there. Plus 2x. So at equilibrium, we have 2x. Now, if we could figure out what x is, and then we could divide it by 2, then we would know what the barium hydroxide is. Okay, and so now we have a pH, but hydroxide, you can't use a pH to go directly to hydroxide. So you got to do this, this relationship, that pH plus pOH equals 14. So 11.9 plus pOH equals 14. So the pOH equals 2.1. All right, so now if we know that the pOH is 2.1, we can use this relationship that the hydroxide ion concentration will be equal to the anti-log, or the 10 to the x button, of the negative pOH. So if we plug that in, and we go anti-log, negative 2.1, we get that the hydroxide ion concentration is 0 0.0079. So I know this relationship, that 2 times x equals 0 0.0079, because that's it. That this number is the hydroxide ion concentration at equilibrium. But I need to know what x is, so basically I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get that x equals, if you round a little bit, 0 0.0040 molar. And if I know what x is, then I know what the barium hydroxide is. So the barium hydroxide must be 0 0.0040 molar. Okay, that's, that's it for this video.